Hi, I'm Laura Russo, and I want to talk a little bit about our project at the organic farm, uh, which involves pollen and nectar nutrition for pollinators. Our goal is to provide nutritionally informed pollinator friendly plantings. The project is based on this idea that there's an incredible diversity of flower forms in nature, and many of these are thought to be the result of interactions with pollinating insects that are driving selection on the form of these flowers. Of central importance to this interaction is the fact that pollinators and flowers want very different things from this interaction. Flower visiting insects are looking for food, which includes pollen and nectar, while most flowering plants need an insect vector to move their pollen from one plant to the next. And they're not interested in the insects consuming their pollen because the pollen is how they reproduce with other plants our experiment aims to investigate three main floral strategies for attracting pollinators. The first is limited access to high protein pollen. The second is unlimited access to low protein pollen. And the third is high volumes of nectar. And in a general sense, we can apply these three different strategies to three different families of plants, the Fabaceae, the Asteraceae, and the Lamiaceae. So this is a picture of one of our research plots at the organic farm with this nice sign that shows that this research was funded by Bayer. And in each plot, we have four individuals of six different plant species of one of the three plant families that I mentioned before. And then we observe pollinator interactions with each of these plant species over the course of the flowering season. Here's an undergraduate researcher, Destiny Matheson, observing insects as they visit the flowers of one of the plant species in one of our research plots. We also have to track the number of flowers or inflorescences of each of the different plant families. Here's master's student Amani Khalil counting inflorescences. This can take quite some time as many of the plants flower in great abundance. So one of the first strategies I want to talk about is in the Fabaceae or the bean family. These are legumes. And one of the strategies that this family of plants employs is called buzz pollination. So the anthers of the flowers, as seen here on the left, have to be buzzed at a particular frequency before they release their pollen. You can think of them like a salt shaker. And only certain insects can buzz at this frequency, which means that only certain insects can access the pollen from the flowers. These plants also do not have any nectaries within the flower. They do have extra floral, here meaning outside of the flowers, nectaries. These produce a sugary substance that is thought to pay for protective services from insects like ants that defend the plant against herbivores. When we want to collect pollen from this plant family, we have to buzz the flowers at a frequency. Here's Anne Murray using an electric toothbrush to buzz the flowers of Senna. And this allows the flower to release the pollen into a tube. And this is how we collect the pollen that we want to analyze. The Fabaceae also have a second strategy that they can employ. And this is having these complex flowers uh, that have a keel, and this prevents most insects from accessing the flower because the insect has to be strong enough, uh, large enough, and smart enough to understand how this flower works, which is that when the pollinator pushes down the keel petal of this flower, it allows them to access the nectar and pollen inside the flower. This means that leguminous or uh, bean plants often require specialized pollinators, and this limits the number and the type of insects that can access their pollen, as well as the amount of pollen that they release to any single visitor. The Asteraceae, or the sunflower family, employs a very different strategy. They usually have very open, very accessible flowers that have abundant, low protein, high fat pollen. So they're providing a resource that is accessible to a broad range of different unspecialized pollinators. And uh, they just provide a lower quality protein resource uh, than the Fabaceae. And this allows them to produce more pollen that can be accessed by these pollinators. The Lamiaceae, or the mint family, employs a different strategy again, 
And in their case, they're not producing very much pollen, but they produce a lot of nectar. And nectar is a sugary substance, so it attracts a broad range of different insects that are interested in just drinking the sugary substance. And maybe they're not even interested in pollen necessarily. So you'll see a broad range of different insects visiting these mint flowers. And sometimes they can have very, very high visitation rates, which is something that we often see in the mountain mints, which are visited by both a large number and a broad variety of different kinds of insects. We can also put all three different plant families in the same research plot. And this allows us to determine whether having these plants in combination is more attractive to pollinators than any one of them alone. And if you're planting a pollinator garden, my recommendation to you is to consider what types of pollinators you'd like to attract and what kind of nutritional resources you're providing to those pollinators in terms of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Um, thank you for listening today.